meeting to order at 8.15. Um, and before I start, I'd like to welcome Mia Smith, who is our new student representative to the board. Welcome, and I'm sorry we keep you waiting so long on the very first night, but we are thrilled to have you. We really appreciate your input. Um, and welcome. And you know what? Let's just go around and introduce ourselves to Mia. She probably knows you. I'm Mia. I'm Jody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Stephen. And I'm Jen. I'm Carl Wicke. I'm the Worcester rep. And I'm Adrian McGee. I'm the Middlesex rep. And I'm Scott Thompson. I'm Rebecca's father. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Goddard from Berlin. I'm George Gross from Berlin, too. I'm Lizzie from Middlesex. <laughs> and we're missing Kari Bradley and Karen Bradley, who are not related at all, <laughs> from um, East Montpelier. And neither of them was able to be with us tonight. And I apologize if some of you came at 7.30. That was a really long meeting. Um, and we're going to try and move through this agenda because all of us have been sitting since at least 5.30, some people since 4.30. Uh, so revisions to the agenda. I'm going to, well, never mind. I'm going to do that later. And public comments. So people are here for a specific discussion. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda, sorry, to approve the minutes of um, August 22nd. So moved. Scott, and second. a second. Carl, any comments, changes, edits? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Do you want to do your student report first? I mean, part of the student report is about the flag policy, so. Why don't you do everything that's not about the flag policy? And then okay. when we get into discussion, if you feel like you need to leave, you can do that. Okay. Does that work? Yeah, so okay. not about the flag policy. Do you want to share some of that, That's, you know, that's that sort of second on our discussion agenda. No, yeah, makes so sense. Yep. Um, well, I wasn't at the last meeting, um, so basically we have to recap everything that's happened since school started. Um, do you want to share a couple of the things? Um, okay. Um, so just like generally like fall sports have started, um, the fall musical has also started. Last week we had the Lotus Lake days for the 8th graders, um, which normally happen in winter, but they happened um, this year because of snow problems, right? Yeah. Well, we've we always canceled. had to cancel them the last few years. And yeah. So, or, or move it day wise. Yeah, so. so that happened and then. So this is replacing the winter time. Yeah, yeah it's which, like a makeup. Which is isn't yeah. successful. Yeah. Got it. Um, and the middle schoolers have Danish pen pals, and they just came and visited last week or earlier in the school year. And homecoming just happened. We had the pep rally, and the author of the 57 bus is coming in tomorrow to talk about. Or she's doing workshops all day and is available to talk to students. Really Sorry, um, yeah. 57 bus? Yeah. Can you give us a little the, bit? The, yeah. the 57 <laughs> bus is a book that just came out, and it's about a transgender person, and there's another, it's a journalistic novel, and it's by Dashka Slater, and she, it's about a transgender person, and they were sitting on the bus, and another juvenile um, came and lit her skirt on fire. And it's about him being tried as an adult and about her experience being, I haven't read it, but it's It's supposed to be really good. good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great. And then also, um, every year the biology class does their water quality study, so that's also happening this week and next week. And then the rest of the stuff we have is about the flag, so we'll go to that. And do you have information from the students in the 10th grade classes? Yes, I Great. do. Okay. Questions? For Lucy and Mia? Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. Um, the first thing our, on our discussion agenda is the diversity, inclusion, and equity belief statement, which is on page. Hang on a second. Is it not in here? I didn't. It's not. I don't see it. No? It is. It was in our old. Yeah. Um, and I guess. We had left it last month. Were there things that people wanted to change? Were we comfortable with it? We just kind of wanted to let it sit for a month. Um, and I don't know if anybody I can drag up last month's 
agenda, or we can wait until October. Maybe we should do that and put it in the agenda. I mean, put it in the packet. Especially if Kari is here. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> can we do that? We'll just pass on that and put it in the um, packet for October. Sorry about that, guys. October agenda. Okay, so the next um, discussion item is the flag policy. And last month we met before school started, though. And so there was a discussion about the Black Lives Matter flag had gone down over the summer. People were concerned about the safety of it. And so there's a discussion about when it would be put up again. In the midst of that conversation, the board decided to try and to draft a flag policy so that we had some guidelines and procedures to follow, so that the administration could follow when the board was presented with options to raise certain flags. And so I drafted, a, it's a rough draft, I didn't even write it as a policy yet, I just kind of put some ideas together. It's on page seven of the packet. That, and I'm going to read the beginning of it. It says, it's the policy of Washington Central, and I didn't know whether to put that or U32, that permission be granted by the U32 school board. So that, you know, I didn't know whether to go the whole supervisor union or just U32. Um, be granted by the U32 school board for flags other than the United States and Vermont flag to be flown on the U32 campus. And then I listed some criteria um, used to make the decisions for flying flags. The request to fly the flag must come from legitimate student groups, which must be able to articulate the importance of flying the flag. The flag must represent ideas that are linked and supported, and support the current U32 mission goals and student learning outcomes. And the flag must bring no harm to other groups of students at U32. And then I had a paragraph, school administration in consultation with U32 board and school community will develop operating procedures that include criteria for, re for reviewing requests from individuals and our groups to raise the flag. And I just made a bulleted list of possible procedures. Um, the definition of a flag versus a pennant or a banner, where the flag would be flown, might it be flown on a separate flagpole, flagpole sorry, than the United States or the Vermont flag, how often the request for flying the flag could be made, would be, must be made to the school board. Is it annually or some other amount of time? When the board takes requests, the number of flags that can fly at any time, can the school board limit the number? What happens when the US flag is flown at half mast, which was a problem right at the beginning of the school year? Um, spe specific criteria for making flag flying decisions and um, decisions for flying flags in the atrium, because there are already a bunch there. And then some questions that came up, um, Kari looked this over, and uh, these were a couple of his questions, and my questions too. Do we need to make this policy generic for all Washington Central schools instead of specifying U32? Um, and there's a note here, the Washington Central Policy Committee had a brief discussion about this at their August meeting and agreed that the U32 board should draft the policy and the policy committee will look at it and decide if it should be an SUY policy. And we're sort of in limbo, depending on whether we become one supervisory, I mean, one um, whatever we're called. District. Yeah. District. District. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one board. Um, and then do we actually need to pass this policy now, or do we want to wait and see what, whether we consolidate or not? And on the back of that page, Corrine Streisberg, um, Corinne, sorry, my niece is Corrine. Corinne Streisberg did a little bit of research and found um, a district in Ontario that flew, what did they call it, the First Nation flag. And they and just- a, And a pride flag. And a pride flag. They had, I thought, a really articulate explanation of why they flew that flag and what it meant to fly it. So I just included that on the back as just, there's, there are other schools wrestling with very similar issues and this just, to me, was very articulate. Um, ben Heinz contacted me right after this board meeting and said that his 10th grade Democratic Roots class was really interested in discussing this issue and talking about, talking about it with the students. And I think Lucy has that information. I know they had lots of discussions. I think they did some surveys. And I said that they were welcome to come and present their information. So I think that's what Lucy's going to do. Yeah. Do you want me to do that now or wait a minute? Why don't 
aren't you doing? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, so basically, the survey was done, just for people who don't know, like the background, it was done on all of the 10th grade students. Um, they're all in a class called Democratic Groups, and it's not like advanced or CP. Everybody's in the same class. Um, so I just took some of the most important or like revealing, I guess, um, results from that survey. Um, so 76.6% of students um, in the 10th grade agreed with the decision to raise the Black Lives Matter flag 8032. Um, they're also asked um, about a separate flagpole being installed for different student flags. 34% um, strongly disagreed, uh, whereas 34% also agreed. Um, so it's a little inconclusive on that one. Um, but I thought the definitely the most interesting one. Um, the question was the student body if they should vote on whether to raise any particular flag. And 77% of students said that they either agreed or strongly agreed that students should get to vote um, on a flag raising. So I thought that was really interesting. Wait a minute, say that again. So the students would vote whether yeah. to raise a flag or not. Okay, yeah. sorry, I missed the moment. And then another question, um, it said, it is fair for the school board to determine what constitutes harm to other groups. Um, and 46% of students agree with that. Um, and 30% disagree. So again, kind of some inconclusiveness. Well, could, um, you, could you repeat that one? I'm sorry, I missed yeah. the question. Um, it's just said, uh, the statement was, it's fair for the school board to determine what constitutes harm to other groups. So I think that's sort of starting to talk about like the flag policy as well as the diversity and inclusion policy. And then the last one, um, which I know has been talked about before, the statement was, student flags should be flown in the atrium, not on the flagpole outside. 41% um, of students disagreed with, or strongly disagreed with that, and 33% disagreed. So the vast majority of students um, do not believe in putting flags into the atrium. So it's just sort of some information to work with. Like the board can still make their own decisions, but the students definitely have some pretty clear opinions about the flags in general. So let me, so that one, the flags that are flying in the atrium at this time, was that in reference to those flags? I think it was just, the flags in the atrium right now, aren't they just flags from exchange students? Right exactly. So that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Is this question reflect those flags already in the atrium? I think they mean, because the question was worded student flags should be flown in the atrium. I think it means flags from like student groups, whether that be okay. BLAM Thank you for that. or yep. BLAM or any other of the groups at school. So kind of student-sponsored flags. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Needed. Thanks. That just cleared it up. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a clarifying question? Yes. That? Did, did they mean that they didn't want it in the atrium because they wanted it outside, or because they just didn't want it in the atrium at all? I think that it was because they wanted it outside because the wording of the statement was student flag should be flown in the atrium, not on the flagpole outside. Oh, so I, I missed think, that. <coughs> yeah, I, I don't know if I read Good that question. part, but I think, yeah. yeah, they wanted it on the pole instead of in the atrium. And so you, those were kind of the most force, forceful questions. Yeah, the other ones um, were a little bit more vague and not as um, concrete with what the results were. Thank you very much. Yeah. Do you know if the, all the classes had discussions about this before the kids took the survey? Um, I don't, Anya, do you? Yeah, they, they all, we discussed it fairly thoroughly. Um, I think it mainly just had to do with, you know, time left in class, obviously. So the survey took up a very small time of, like, it took up probably 10 minutes max at the end of class. And before that, we had, like, a 30-minute conversation about it. So, yeah, I think all it was was the reason why you got vague answers on a lot of them was because the all of the questions could have been interpreted with hypothetical situations that I think a lot of students had hesitated towards. Thank you. I can't see, but. <laughs> <laughs> so my hope is that we can have a discussion about the kinds of things we want in this policy and then draft a policy. This isn't even a first reading. It's just kind of a discussion about the big ideas of this policy. And I am one person who drafted it. I tried to take information. I took information from our conversations last month and try to reflect those. So. Well, I guess my first question would be is, and maybe the board, and I wasn't here for the last meeting, so I might have missed this discussion, but is it necessary that we have a flag policy? 
I mean, that's, that's, that's a question that's, that's right down at the bottom. That's my larger question is, do we have to have one? Does Montpelier High School have one? Um, do other school districts have them? I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a valuable, uh, you know, we don't need another committee necessarily, but um, I think it's a, it's, it's certainly a question worth exploring. Um, because certainly we as a board don't need a policy for everything that we do, uh, nor does the administration need a policy for everything that they do. So I think, you know, we have some freedom in terms of our decision making ability and uh, so that's why I asked that question. Do we have to have one? Yeah. Adrian? Yep. May I ask Stephen? Yeah. Um, Stephen, uh, I'm, forgive my bad memory, um, made worse by the hours that we've already spent at this. Um, well, I mean, you know, in the cafeteria. Um, do I recall that Essex High School had a policy? I believe or? that um, Essex is the one, I think you're right, is they had drafted one. Um, I and Brattleboro. 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 Because they have a flag up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As well. And I don't know the answer to the Montpelier question. I do not either. I, they have a policy. They, they do, do have they a policy. Have or sure. They're currently working on one, but I'm pretty sure they have OK. So that would be something to look at mm -hmm. to see if they do have one. But it's still a question worth considering. Yeah. And it was one that would Kari raised too. And I would say from an administration standpoint on that, the clearer our instructions are, the easier it is for us to carry out the wishes of the board. Mm. Right? That's, that's for us. Yeah. It becomes a super gray area if we don't have clear guidance. Mm -hmm. So, so that sounds like a policy is I, useful. I'm saying for, for administration's desire would be to have more clarity. How come? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about, I think no. we'll, yeah, no, I, I, and I, have, I should have said this. I think we'll have our discussion, and then I will open it up for public comment. Does that work for you? Unless you have a clarifying question like you did. So just, we'll have our discussion and then I do want to hear from the public. So, any other comments or? I think it's a terrific start. Good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's been, 30, a month and four days, and we promised to have a policy within two months. Or perhaps decide not to have a policy. <laughs> but, but we did we did target two months as yeah. the time frame. Yeah, we don't. Um, so I guess I'm sort of questioning what our next step is towards refining this towards a final. So my vision is that I would take all the input we had tonight, draft it, so that it sounds like a policy instead yeah. of kind of this of and bring it back in October as a first reading. If we all agree and there are no substantive cha changes, we could pass we could it pass at the it first reading. If there's substantive chance changes, sorry, we would have to wait and do a second reading. That sounds, Does that help? I think so that that's kind of like the timeline. Process, yeah. And um, our next meeting would be the end of October, a month from now. Yeah. So we'd be close to two months. And Adrian, mm -hmm. you did something really good, I thought, which was to share the draft policy with, with Ben, I believe, mm -hmm. Ben Heinz. Yep. And he has been using it in his classes, at least his current events class. So and Scott went and talked to those kids, right? I did, yeah. <laughs> wow. So we're trying to get some <clears throat> broader involvement in this. Yeah, yeah. but um, they, were, they were so articulate and, and really impassioned. Um, and, and, you know, unafraid of just staking out positions on you know, the side that they were, that they were advocating for. But, um, but I think the policy, um, the draft policy, really helped to kind of the discussion to coalesce around something real yeah. and not just a, a kind of abstract yep. thing. Yep. And it, I mean, I guess I have a question. The students strongly feel that they should be able to vote on whether a flag is flown. 
And that's an interesting thought that it had not occurred to me at all. Is that something we include in a policy? Do students have input into which flags fly? Or does the board decide because it fits the mission? Or does the board decide that it would be OK to fly it, and then the students vote yes or no once they've gotten the board's blessing? I would go the other way around. To my, it would make more sense. I think, ultimately, legally, the decision would lie with us as a board. So the students Therefore, a, but there's certainly no reason that we couldn't take a student vote as input towards the decision-making process. Right. That seems like a very natural process to me. And that that order of operations leads to a legal decision on and, our part. And then we decide the whether it fits lines. with the yeah, rest with of the, the policy. Mission. Then, we, then yeah. we can take that vote and decide how it fits with it. So that's an interesting yeah. thought. I would almost say the opposite. Um, because it would be a truly democratic vote uh, if, if we approved and, and we said yes, this in fact meets the criteria um, to go to a vote of, of the student body. After we hmm. said yes, it meets the criteria, right? And then do that you approve go. as a student? Then, that we was what the, I said. then we let the democratic process. I guess I can see that. Hmm. I can see that. It's it's a viewpoint that I hadn't thought of at all. Yeah, and that almost gets into a procedural, right? This is the step we're going to take to approve or not approve, right? I mean, it's, it gets into the very nitty gritty of what a potentially a procedure might look like. And we might make suggestions to the administration about the procedure. We don't tend to usually write procedures. We write the right. policy. Um, well, and then the administration, although they might appreciate us, us writing the policy. Furthermore, I, I think I'd rather procedure. let the administration decide um, whether it is appropriate or not, and then they could come to us if, if it was cloudy um, or if it was just unclear, um, or if it was that difficult of a decision. I think we need to trust in our administration. <laughs> all right. so, mind if I weigh in? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> so um, I think that uh, there's several things we might want to consider in, in, in some of the way we think about our policy. Um, the first, um, we would help repair any student group to come before the board like that. I think that that's like, we're not gonna be the arbiter of whether or not they should come before the board, but I think that our job is to make sure that they're prepared when they come before the board. And I think that that would be our role, um, or should be our role, not deciding on whether or not a student group should come to the board. Right. I think that that would, that would limit the democratic process. Mm -hmm. Our job should be to help prepare kids to come here so that they are fully aware of what's going on. I think the student vote issue there are certainly we're a democratic society and we want to create democratic processes <clears throat> but we also run the risk of the minority voice never being heard in that situation exactly. and I just think that there, there, there's checks and balances within a democratic society to make sure that the minority voice can be heard and so we would just want to make sure that we created some type of mechanism around that right I mean that's why we have you know three branches of government is because there's a redress, you know, in, in, within our society, we hope. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would just, I would just caution us, just, I, I think it's great that there's, like, it sounds interesting, the, the, the numbers is that there was a high number of students who would have approved it, and there were a high number of students who wanted to vote for it, right? And so those are both positives about this. And so I'm kind of thinking out loud because I hadn't thought of these same ideas either. But the other piece I, I think might be good in doing a vote is that there would need to, we would by nature, the board could approve if we did the board approval first. And then before we go to the student vote, that time period that exists between when we actually vote and when the board says, yes, this is something that the students could consider, is the educational time that we might need. Exactly. So, so to actually put together the, here's what our community needs to grow through whatever the situation is, whatever flag that we choose to put up, we would have the what we missed in this this 
scenario that we're dealing with now with the Black Lives Matter flag is that we're doing our education after the flag goes up. Yeah. This would be something that would pre, you know, have to be there. Yeah. Like students couldn't vote on something they weren't educated about. And I guess that was my assumption because we had talked about that <clears throat> over multiple meetings yeah. that, that, that we are stepping into the educational piece prior yeah. to going the route. And you know, and, and I, I think that that's the learning experience. Um, you know, that's the that's the teachable moment that we're looking for when we do. So you know, that our voices are heard prior correct, to something correct. happening, which is what we want in democratic society, right? right? So that was my assumption that that was vote. that was happening prior. Because I'm wondering if this process had been in place and we had said okay, and then the students voted on a Black Lives Matter flag without any education, whether this vote would have been the same or not. Correct. Yep. And, and we, it, we have it no might way be, of we don't mm -hmm. know, but I think you're right, the education is really important in that piece. So ju I just, several things that I would yep. hope to... I'm not sticking you out on a limb there, I'm, you know, I just... I, I, I think I'm already out there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all out there. <laughs> we're on uncharted are. territory here. Um, so Jonathan, we still sort of haven't... You know, we've talked about the policy, but whether we need one. You missed the meeting. Bill and Stephen spoke pretty firmly about needing a policy, mm -hmm. that it really helped them right. make decisions yeah. um, as they do with other things. They rely on policy, and it's kind of our job to set policy, and then they carry it out. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, sur I'm not opposed to it. I was just raising yeah, the question. Yeah, well, I think it's a good I mean, one. That's, that's um, all it was. It was really and I don't, I don't hear strongly that we don't need it. I think, I think our, I think our administration has asked us for it, and therefore we should provide it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Anybody else? You guys have comments or questions or suggestions? Is yours come and gone? Yeah, a little bit. One, I, I think you've done a wonderful job for all parties. And it's great listening to everything. It's a lot. Um, one question I have is, what gives any one of you the right to make a law, I guess, on paper of what's right and what's not? Why isn't higher authority for every school have it all black and white so that everything's equal? Why should Montpelier do this and U32 do this and Rutland do this? I'm a little lost there. Because you live in Vermont. <laughs> 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 That's not acceptable. Yeah. We're only, uh, we're not laughing at you. The previous no, okay. meeting dealt with this issue at <laughs> three, 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 three hours. Three hours. I, mean, I feel bad for you guys having to deal with it. <laughs> and I, I think, I mean, it's, it's double edged sword. I think the beauty of U32 is that we have a culture and we have a community and we've built a personality around the school. <clears throat> And the students help that, and the teachers, the administration, the school board. And you will find that all schools have different cultures and personalities, just as towns do and states do. And I think all of us are individuals, and a collective individual U32 forms this school. And it's not necessarily going to be the same. We have different clientele, different people. Um, it's a really good question. The only other thing that concerns me is I do like every single kid's vote, but as a parent, they're not 18, their vote really shouldn't count. I, mean, I apologize, but it's the way I feel. It's, I love the data, I think it's great, but you know, I still tell you what time to come home. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, again, I'm Anya, I'm a 10th grade student here. Um, and I think a huge issue with this is, I mean, frankly, the lack of, you know, a feeling of safety in school often, um, because with things such as school shootings and, you know, horrible acts of violence frequently happening, um, I think that there's often a very tense, you know, aura around politics and debate and things like that, because, you know, now it, there's a very vague line between you know right and wrong and death and things like that and um, I think that they having a right to do this I don't think it's you know something that's like oh 
why do they have a right to create this policy or law um, surrounding right and wrong, because obviously they do have biased opinions, but like, I think we're in a situation where we sort of need it, um, in the sense that like, regardless of political view, anything like that, in school, I think the students generally feel um, a bit frustrated with um, almost a feeling of silence or whatever, you know, like they feel like things are being introduced very quickly without much consideration of their views and things like that, which in my opinion are valid because I mean, you know, we are human beings and we do um, have feelings and things like that and flags are something that represent those feelings and can help unite us and give us a greater feeling of safety or, you know, a greater feeling of discussion, something like that, regardless of whether or not you agree with what the flag represents. I think that it's something that like needs to be talked about and needs to happen. Um, and the students very much so need to be involved in it, in my opinion. Thank you. I have a comment. Um, my name is Jennifer Mike I'm from East Montpelier. I brought along, um, sort of carrying forward the Canada thing, I brought a form that one of, a school in Canada uses that has a very yes. low bar, actually, for the um, raising of a flag proposed by a student. And I think that that's actually a really good way to start. Um, if you want to inc uh, improve uh, children's sense of agency and authority over their own lives, then you start with their right to say something. And one of the ways they can do that is by advocating for themselves to have a flag raised. Now, you don't have to have a complicated policy, I don't think. I think you, you have minimum standards for decency, essentially. You, you want to comply with the laws and regulations around hate speech and things like that. And you also want um, to not be particularly offensive to particular groups. Um, but barring harm to another group, I think that you might think about really opening this up and letting students come forward with ideas about what flag they might want to raise. In this particular instance, <coughs> flags can be raised for, each flag is raised for about 30 days. And so you may want to consider whether you really want the board to be making those decisions every month when, uh, if there's a low bar and it, the principal finds that the, what the student is asking for meets that bar, then the flag would get a month when the, where it could be raised. Um, you might also think about whether you might want to have certain flags at certain times of the year, like for Black History Month or something like that, where you have actually sort of a built-in curriculum around what might be happening. Um, those are just some ideas that I had, uh, and um, there, there actually is a policy that I can provide you at the end of the meeting. It's not that long, but it just is very basic about what what student would be asking for, and then there's also the form, like I said. That um, I would love to. I would love to see it. I, you know, there's very little out there. Yeah, um, no, there, there isn't a lot, and we're actually really lucky because a lot of the flag debates that are happening in the country right now have to do with the Confederate flag. So it would be nice if we didn't have to worry about that. Um, but that seems to be what, what most of the cases around flag policies are having to deal with these days. That brings up a great point. Um, who, what's to say that a certain child in this school wants a Confederate flag back on the pole? Yeah, what gives you the right to say no? So that's exactly why we want a policy. So we would go and we would say, does it meet the mission and um, student learning outcomes of our school? Does it fit with all these other things? I don't and believe you can do that because what my boy actually brought up a great point when all this was happening last year and said, well, I'm overweight and I want a flag that has a fat person on it because I get picked on at school. And we were like, what? Mm -hmm. And you know, so, you couldn't say he can't do that, and there's only 365 days in a year. There's not enough flags. Everybody would just start creating flags. Oh, my boy wants a hunting and fishing one because that's his life. And how is one getting the less skateboarding flag? Together. They would just sit and create <laughs> one all day long. And that sounds like what Jennifer's. 
talking about a little bit. I mean, maybe you could have a hunting and fishing one. I mean, yeah. I, you know, but you what can't I'm have saying. guns in school, so is that a lawsuit? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a flag. This is my point. That, 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 that this is a flag, and, and I think that we are, we have gotten so caught up in in a, a piece of cloth, and that you know the piece of cloth, it, if it if it makes somebody happy, you know, I think that the bigger lesson is sometimes in life, you know, you're going to be dissatisfied, but you can't rain on everybody's parade all the time. And, and I, I, we just keep moving away from the fact that it is a flag. I, you're wrong. I did homework on it last year. And I believe it's in the minutes or notes. And I interviewed a lot of black people right in Vermont and that are all our age with kids and everything. And every single one of them, every single one of them, I can give you names and everything, were very, very disgusted. So I'm, I'm not looking to start a debate at all. No, I'm just I'm, telling you the fact. I'm just, you know, saying that we're getting really wound up about a piece of cloth, and I and it's you know I, there has to be common ground that that we can work together and, and decide this policy. Um, but I I also see the point of um, there's so much media out there and so much access that these flags could could skirt our our very um, decisions that we've made or criteria that that we've come up with. Um, very cleverly, and, and it could turn into something. So, is there anybody who that. hasn't made a comment who would like to? Out there. Just, I mean, I have my quarrels with what was just said, but I don't really think it's the time of the for the meeting. Yeah. Um, so, I just, I mean, to be more exact, my personal suggestion, and I feel like it's, it's a general, you know, I feel like it's a good average from what I've, from the people I've spoken to in the 10th grade and in our classes and the discussions we've had, um, I think that we want, you know, to be able to vote on things like this just not only for the purpose of being like, oh, you know, here's what we think about this, also just so that, you know, we know that this is actually what's happening. Um, because again, with the Black Lives Matter flag, for a lot of people, you know, not, I mean, we're students and oftentimes, unfortunately, aren't very involved in politics and things like that. And so um, we don't see things like memos and things like that that are talking about these things. And so it just sort of came out of nowhere for a lot of us. And um, I think that got a bit overwhelming regardless of whether or not you agreed with it. Um, and I think it would be important just to have the vote so that, you know, it's like, oh, we're all actually discussing this and putting our opinions into this, and it's not just like, you know, an obstruction of free speech or whatever, you know. So I'm going to take all this input and try and craft a policy. And I will pass it by Kari, who's not here tonight, or maybe someone who is here also. Um, and it will come back in October. And at that time, we can pass it, we can change it, we can take, you know, there are a lot of things we can do, but we could pass it if people are comfortable with it by then. Okay, and I really appreciate all of your input. Thank you very much for that. And let me go back to my agenda here. Board goals are on page nine. Um, just look. So the, these are the board goals we've been looking at. The diversity goal I added, these are kind of the final goals. And I guess, why they're on here tonight is to think one more time about the um, community involvement, which is community engagement, which is the third goal. And the executive committee really wants some specifics about what we want. And I have a piece of paper. Where did I put the discussion from the executive committee? Hold on a second. Um, so, Anya, before you leave, one quick second, because I, yes. I want to. So one thing I think is important about what Anya just said mm -hmm. is the awareness factor. And, and I think that that's, the, like from your comment, that's what Jody and I were just writing down, was that when you talk, when we're thinking about community engagement, that awareness factor is really high. And we found that because we, we're, we're trying to get better, right, at our own communication. And we've gotten a lot more positive com, uh, conversation with our parents 
from some of our more recent pieces. So trying to, um, there's, there's some stuff I'll talk about a little bit later, but um, a regular update of progress in school that's there now for parents to be able to see. A, um, we just sent out a note to our middle school parents because we're going to talk to our middle school kids about something, right? But it's that awareness, that, that kind of precursor to it. And I think that that's what I hear a lot from what Anya was just saying is that just we want to know what's happening to us and we want to be more aware. And we haven't been great about that because we've been dealing with too many things at some times, right? But, uh, but I think we're getting better at that. And I would just encourage the board, like when you think about community engagement, that's the big piece that we're starting to see a lot from. And, so. and I think that's what Tim and Diane said the first time they came to this meeting was yeah. that they if they'd no been idea. aware, they would have right. been able to come in and talk yep. about this earlier, too. Right. So it's awareness for everybody. So to figure out how to make people aware. Yeah, yeah just get ahead. Like, it's that few minutes ahead that we just never seem to get. Get one step ahead instead yeah. of one <laughs> step behind. Right. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that, that people then know what to expect. And, and that's, I think that's where we alleviate a lot of fear and a lot of misconceptions. And, you know, you know, I'll own my part of it. You know, we haven't been doing that at the school level well, and we're trying to get better at that. And that's what we've been doing recently. So. And last month, we talked about sharing information, informing the citizens, um, getting support. These are reasons we want community engagement, the why, sorry. Mm -hmm. To get support for our decisions, to get buy-in, to make pe people feel included to get information out there so that people can make better decisions, um, to achieve a better educational experience for the kids, um, to make people's lives better, including students, families, and folks not directly involved in our school, to maintain community involvement, and to achieve better outcomes for our students. <clears throat> and I guess if we can figure out maybe one or two, of, two or three of those to really focus on, um, and then try to get consensus around the whole SU about them. I think what we really need is a regular supply of controversial issues. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That's what gets people out, yeah? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're shaking their heads out. Uh, <laughs> Some of us aren't retired yet. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Pushing you in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, I mean, I think what Stephen said is pretty, sums it up pretty well. Um, is, that, is that what community engagement is? Or is that just a piece of it? I think it's a pretty important piece. I, I hesitate to try to encompass all of what community engagement could be. Yeah, so yeah. provide input on the purpose of board-level community engage, engagement. To keep people aware. <clears throat> I, I actually think all of those are pretty important. Okay, I'm going to send that back to them. <laughs> That's where we were. Yeah. Track resurfacing. Let's switch subjects here. <laughs> so um, that's not written correctly. It is a track rebuild. Rebuild, yeah. yeah. Um, resurfacing would be easy. Um, this is digging the whole mess up, redoing drainage. The track itself has reached its end of life. Um, every every bit of work that we do on it now is just patches and not it's not going to get any better and, and it's, it's just so so some of our indications from um, a few of the uh, engineering uh, early engineering reports were just that this the <coughs> subsurface this where it, okay I'm going to go off in areas I don't know enough about to really speak with any expertise but the subsurface is not um, in good shape and so it needs to be redone from the bottom um, that could cost us anywhere from about 750000 to about $1.1 in our early estimates of that. Um, you want the good news? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, can, we can do this without bonding. Um, we are um, 
we are going to ask that some of our um, fund balance, the surplus that you see in your financial statements, we can move that over with some good spending on our capital funds. Um, we can save back enough money to where we do not need to bond this, but uh, we feel like we would be able to move forward with a um, with the project and be able to pay for it with our our excess fund balance. I hate to use excess, but but <coughs> the excess fund balance above, above what the board uh, wants us to have on a routine basis and um, money that we can save back from some of our um, just thoughtful spending. Yeah. What is the time frame for this? So um, we need to start moving to the engineering phase, so we would have to have some approval around this. It might, we might need the finance committee, because the finance committee and the capital committee were merged, um, so we would yeah. need some conversation with that. Of course, it's going to fall in the time period that begins um, with the next budget cycle, um, which anybody's guess as to who's going to be approving that or putting that together. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so we will, oh, we will. Um, the project needs to get started now, um, so that we can begin planning because it's one of those things where we graduate with a bulldozer waiting at our backs, right? Mm -hmm. To to tear it all up. So you're um, thinking this summer? It's going to be. Doing. I don't think it's, no, it's not this summer, it's the following summer, summer I, I believe so is the time. 2020. I believe, I, I'm, I'm already off a year, I think it's this summer. <laughs> I think it's this summer, <laughs> because yeah. we yeah. talked about yeah. an engineer yeah, yeah. coming in the yeah. last it meeting. Yeah. But is it June or is it waiting until July 1? No, it's way, oh. It's well, because that's so, the budget. Well, yeah. Remember, capital funds are, are really sit sit separately, somewhat from the budget. So we could start the project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, I don't know. What year no, it's. I think it's 2019. Yes, yeah, it is. It's this summer. Yeah. Because yeah. it's reached the end of its life. Yeah, it's it definitely has. And there is no alternative service. Dirt. Worked for years. It did, but <laughs> it does. But there are honestly there are very few tracks of our quality in Central yeah. Vermont, and so it gets used quite a bit by both the community, by, um, by by the state in terms of just being able to use a facility. I mean, we have everything from the state troopers here using it for their physical their, uh, physical tests to um, the community members that you all you can always look out there and see somebody in the morning. Yeah. It's a it's a resource that's well used, and we we've hosted the state track tournament in Division Two multiple times. Years in a row. Yeah, several yeah. years in a row because we're about the only good track left, um, and ours is still not in great shape. Maybe we should start renting it out Coin girl. and put a tip, <laughs> put a tip jar out there. Right yeah, there. Exactly. <laughs> so, I would say that you know we we've always had the conversations about using the building itself, but you know our our fields and our facilities outside of here are used quite a bit as well. And so, without risk of, of exaggeration, we're we're going to be able to pay for it. It will take all of our capital funds across a you know across a time period as well as uh, money that we've saved, but. Um, as we have done in the past couple of years, we underestimate the revenue that we receive from our tuition students, and that's where you see a lot of our additional fund balance has been built from. Right. And it looks like we will be seeing some of the same this year, um, but uh, we've still got to play out the numbers, but it looks like we'll still have that. And that's been providing the cushion. That's the kind of project that you want to do on the tuition students' money yeah. because that's not something that's necessarily operational for the school. And so that's where we've been able to save the money up over the last couple of years. And George, I don't know if you've been at the meetings, but they have resurfaced that track a number of times. Yeah, it's been resurfaced. Since its original build, it's been resurfaced twice. Yeah. Yeah. And that they've sort of done all. It was kind of like the bleachers. You've done all that you can do, and now you've got to start over. <coughs> Um, so what are you looking you for from us, though? I, I think it's just um, right now it's making you aware, and um, and then we're going to be coming back with several um, action items around moving money into the capital fund and um, starting to to do the use the fund balance. Do you need purpose. the finance committee to meet? Um, I think it's Kari and Karen. Oh, are you on that also? I am. So, because you haven't, you guys haven't met for a while. We, right? met since we last might, season. you know what? We might need that committee to meet okay. around the capital piece so that we can lay out the full plan. Because sure. we're going to have to do bids for, for yeah. our stuff, and so yeah. um, 
I will send them. I will send a note to you, so that uh, if we need to have the finance committee. Okay. Meet. And you could also send and it then, to Karen and Kari and, and Scott. And we'll, we'll work with them just so so we can get a proper chance. Great. Yep. Thanks. We got to do some work. Yeah. Just a question. Great. How, what's the life span Good of question. the track? Or uh, so, so of the track that's out there, it's been over 20 years okay. that for for the base. I think it was even prior. I I don't know if it was done in the last renovation. It's been, but it's been resurfaced twice within that 20. Years. Yeah, well, yeah. Was, winters take a toll on oh, on tracks around there. And, and, and is that basically what you're looking for going forward about 20 years? That's years I would imagine same life expectancy. We're Actually, all hopefully a better <laughs> base construction. So, uh, hopefully a better base construction to it. There were some faults found in some of the construction techniques, but that may just have been the technique at the time. So we're paying $50,000 a year for the truck. Okay. If it's a million dollars, right? Yeah, if it yeah. comes yeah. out to that. Yeah. Would the state give it funds if they're using it? Is there a way to get the state to give funds? We're the only game in town? No. <laughs> they don't have any Basketball money. or football. Do you have anything there? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. What, what other sports would we spend fifty thousand dollars a year on? Uh, well, if you're talking about the fields and facilities, um, so we redid our basketball court, and I can't remember the numbers on that. So um, that was just half of it, one gym, not both of them. With the bleachers, that was over. I think that project was over two hundred thousand dollars for bleachers and um, and floor, and then just one of the gyms. Um, so the gyms are used uh, every day, all day for. Mm -hmm. We use the, we use the outdoors a lot well, quite a bit. I mean, it's, uh, and weather dependent. They ski know. on it in the winter. Yeah, it's used all year round. Yeah. We don't actually need a truck to no, ski in circles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I, that's a decision for our finance committee to make. Thanks. Something to think about. But it's a you know, we break it down fifty thousand dollars a year for a track. It's something to think about. Thanks. Um, financial audit. I don't. Do I have something in this packet? That I don't know. What that I have no idea what that is. I'm sorry. I did not put that on there. I don't have anything in this pile of stuff. Which oh, the board orders are. In here. You might pass those around. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to let that one go because. We usually get the audit not in September, right? Yeah, they thought maybe looking over this agenda that that was a, a mistake for some reason. Yeah, I'm sure right it now. is because I have no idea why it was there. I mean, and I didn't catch it. I'm sorry. I was at a wedding. <laughs> um, and then 3.6 is the Act 46 update, which well, I think we just had. It. I don't know if there's anything that. else we need to say. Down on the action agenda is approval for joining the legal action, so we can. When we get to that, we can do that. It won't take us long to get down there. Um, and I think other than that, we've heard mm -hmm. everything we need to hear. Um, reports to the board. Central Vermont Career Service. Karen went, and she's not here. No, she didn't. She didn't end up going. I went, went. I went to the REV yesterday, uh, and I do have a report for you. She maybe went a month ago. Did she go a month ago? Anyway. Maybe. OK, yeah. go ahead. That's yeah. great. Okay, so um, so I attended the REV meeting at the request of Bill uh, Kimball um, so that we have representation there because REV. the Regional Advisory Board okay. for CDCC, yep. right? So that's the their oversight board. I don't fully know that I'm a voting member of that board. Like this is the question around like how it's constituted and all of that. So I also, um, just so you know, I made a plea that they change the times that the board meets so that our board members and or our superintendent could attend because they are going to be making some pretty big decisions. So the, um, the program overall, so um, the agenda for this meeting was dominated by um, a presentation from the a design build team from the Central Vermont uh, Career Center. This is a group of teachers and their administration who have been working with um, uh, this, let me get the right company here, uh, Truex Collins, um, to, uh, to look at the possibility of CC, CVCC moving off-site to another location. I'm reading from their information here. 
due to Spalding High School Board stating in May 2018 that they are looking at occupying that wing of the building. Um, so they've done multiple meetings from May to August, and the team researched state board rules, te te technical education regulations, and other various resources. And, um, and they determined through that process that if they are going to look at a build new or renovate site that is off of the Spalding campus, that they would need to employ um, a company to help start that process. They asked, so, so the motion was made at the meeting to ask the Spalding board to designate $88,000 of the fund balance really for the tech center, the, the, the career center, to begin the study. The timeline that they lay out is a three-year timeline of uh, designing, acquiring funding, and then build, you know, going through the design and build process for, um, for the school. Um, it's super ambitious, the uh, three-year, everybody agrees a three-year timeline is super ambitious because the funding that they would be going for would be through the legislature. Um, most possible. That would be their, their preferred method because bonding a new building through the town of Barrie might not go over really well. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and so, um, so there was a lot of discussion. That motion was made. Well, I abstained in st stating that I didn't know that I represented the views of this board in, because this was news to us. I didn't know that I could represent the views of this board nor my superintendent, so I abstained from the vote. They actually tabled, well, I, I didn't have to abstain, they actually tabled it because there weren't a whole lot of people from the sending schools that were there. There were a few industry members and most of the people were um, the CDCC teachers, which they don't vote actually on that group. Um, so what my plea to them was, if you're going to be making decisions like this, you really need to have meeting times that can accommodate enough people yeah. to, to, to make real decisions here. Because, and this was what I understood, this is why I'm a, a lot of detail here, but you know, one more controversy, right, uh, for us. Um, if that board voted to ask the Spalding board to release that money, and the Spalding board voted against that motion, the Spalding board then had to send a letter to the AOE explaining why they would not approve that. I felt like I was in a position to force another board to do something, which I didn't feel like I had any authority from you guys, like what your feelings might be on this kind of topic to be able to even get involved. And so thank goodness they take it because it's a big decision. They are looking at doing an October 25th meeting at a more appropriate time, this instead of four o'clock, but uh, but it's also Thursday, October twenty fifth. I say when's our board meeting? It's October twenty fourth, right? Yeah. So, um, so, so it was a lot. Um, if they proceed, if at some point in time in the near future they do vote to ask of the board to release the money, and the board votes and they do release the money, and they get the eighty eight thousand dollars to begin the process, at that point in time they're going to develop a planning committee that is made up of sending schools and um, members of administration and faculty at the Career Center. So, a lot going on over there. I will say this, that there are early documents that talk about some of the process. One of the earliest sites that they have already mentioned is the potential for a site near the airport in Berlin, which I don't know how it all works. This is where I have no knowledge nor um, ability to know right now what governance looks like for a program that is administered by Barry Schools that is in our district when their district might also be merging and all kind of, like we are at the confluence of who's in charge <laughs> at the moment um, so uh, so that could be very complicated i felt like i have not even been able to give this report to bill this was just last night that i was at that meeting 
Um, and so I don't know what his views are on in terms of being a part of it. I know that he sent me specifically because he couldn't go, mm -hmm. and he knows that there's a lot happening. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very new. They did present to the um, Spalding board a month ago for the first time. That's when they heard about all of this. And so, I'm glad you were there. Yeah. Well, we saw that, Jim. <laughs> and, and the Spalding, and the Spalding oh, board is the one who told them they needed was, to move. I was all <laughs> told. So there's, there's actually, there were two members of the board that were a part of this, and um, and they were pretty adamant that they never said that they were throwing them out of that win. Like, there's a lot, there's a question about that, that's their problem. <laughs> that's, that's their issue. I stay out of that stuff. I just sat there twiddling my thumb. Um, because I just don't I don't, I don't, I don't know their politics, I don't know um, what conversations have had, I, I haven't read their minutes, so I have no idea what was said or what was not said about the, the CDCC and the Spalding uh, by their board members. But it's, a, it's going to be a big deal and a big project. I mean, we're the second largest number of students in the program behind uh, the Spalding students. So um, we will, it will impact us in some way. So how successful were you with changing the meeting time? Um, so uh, they do want to, I, they were pretty clear that 4 o'clock was not appropriate for if we want actual members of our boards to be there. Yeah. Um, and, and that Tuesday can't always be on a Tuesday night. You know, there's, there's some, yeah. they, they heard, they, they're moving the first meeting to Thursday. The time is yet to be determined. So. But the jury's still out. I, I, I've, I've held that spot in my schedule. Um, Thank you. But, but I think one, one of the things that I'm going to probably need from you guys now, this is, this is going to be a big deal. Like, I'll need some feedback around, I'll need your questions. Like, I don't know that you can even, you, you probably are like I am right now. Like, what feedback do I even give? But your questions about this process, because um, there was mention of how does the cost, if it's not funded by the state, move across the sending towns, right? And that's a big question. Like, if there, if the only board that can vote on it is the Spalding board about whether or not this all occurs, well, you can't... You, you, tax the other... Yeah, you can't tax other towns, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so it just, it's, it's going to be super complicated. And um, in its earliest stages, um, there's certainly a lot of questions about does it is there an enrollment to support it are there you know there's only 150 students at the at CDCC right now um, and uh, and some of their programs are are not full even right now and so there are programmatic issues that have to be discussed there are building issues that have to be discussed there's all kinds of things. just out of curiosity is that enrollment increasing no but my argument would be that the programs don't necessarily serve the interests of our students and our communities right now. That they, they don't fully articulate what we need. And, and we know that because some of our students are down at Randolph because Randolph Tech has programs that are... Um, you satisfy that, what our students want. That, that satisfy what our students want. And so so we, maybe this is an opportunity to... I think, that that, I think that's a very good way to look at it. Yes, an opportunity to... Right. And so it's going, to, it's going to become, it's going to be an issue that we're going to have to at least weigh in on at some point in time. Thank you. Yep. And next administration. Thank you. Good night. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Just have looking at night. the clock, it's time for us yeah. to go. Yeah. 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 Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Um, administration report. Can I just, I, I, unless there's something, Jody has one thing that I would like to, uh, to mention. I just mentioned it a, a few minutes earlier. We put into our grade books. So all our classes, all of our teachers are doing what's called a current course performance that is now going into um, uh, all classes. And it's meant to help our students and our parents and our TAs um, know how our kids doing in class. Are they meeting the expectations? This is the only thing you can do. You're either meeting the expectations or you should seek assistance, right? And so the, um, we sent out a note to parents uh, last Friday. No, Sunday. I, uh, Sunday, because I see went down. I didn't get it out for so Sunday. Um, and, uh, and informed them of this, our teachers are going to update it every two weeks. We just spent some time today in our staff meeting updating it so that those, uh, those scores are um, more accurate for students. And it's meant for students, if they said, if they're getting seek assistance, it, it is the trigger for them to go to call back with that teacher 
to talk with that teacher about what they might be missing in their class or looking just in the grade book to see what uh, assignments they may be missing. I noticed teachers today made some comments, so if they put seek assistance, they put a comment in there that said kind of more specifically what they might need to do. Um, and so we're, we're trying to create a more proactive approach to the, the proficiency-based grading, which is confusing when parents look at a large number of things. Is there one simple thing I can look at to make sure that my child's on track right now, and do they need additional help? And what did so, you call it? We call it current course performance. Current course, and is it part of Power School? It, in the, campus. Infinite Campus. Infinite which is Campus, ours. sorry. And it's actually the way that it's done is the on the in the portal, which is fairly confusing. Right, it's the first mm -hmm. score you see um, after the name of the course. So it, we put it right up top, so that when you see the name of the course, you see is my child currently meeting expectations, or do they, should they seek assistance? And so it's just it, we're gonna we're gonna try it as a way to communicate with our families and our students and our TAs because I don't always know as a TA what classes my kids need to go to call back for or talk to teachers. It, it's gonna help us do some of that work. So if they don't seek assistance, the TA the TA is also gonna be looking okay. at it as well. So um, when we so another tool that we use for scheduling callback it's called Enriching Students. It's a scheduling software. It will show that score for those classes um, for all my kids. So when I go in to schedule them, I can see like, oh, in English, you're meeting expectations. But, oh, in math, you should seek assistance. And then I can have a conversation with the kids like, okay, you need to go see this teacher or call back. I can help them do what they need to do uh, to get caught up in the class. So, yeah, so it's just, it's one thing we've added in and we've got, I, you know, it's one of the few emails that I sent out that I got back nothing but positive remarks for. I got back <laughs> about a dozen parents with just a thank you. You know, this is helpful. We appreciate it. And so a dozen, I'll take. Right? And so so that, that seems to be a good start for us. Stephen, is there any way of being able to tell how often parents are logging on to? Yes. Learning? There is. Mm -hmm. We can see how often uh, we can see how often teachers update their gradebook. We can see how often students access the uh, portal. We can see how often parents access the portal as well. Uh oh. <laughs> and they don't have time to do that. There's a lot of people. They're like, have you seen how many times Scott has the portal today? <laughs> we are not looking at specific parents. I think we have school board work on this. Don't you have a wife? I have to look into that. <laughs> um, and so we're going to, and we're going to keep updating. So this, this week when I send out the update, we'll also remind parents, so if you don't have access to the portal, here's how you can gain access to it, um, to make sure that they have that access as well. So. That's it. I could go on with some other stuff, but I, I did put my report about uh, Math 180. Oh, yeah. The earliest think, piece. Yeah. Um, if I, just as a quick... I do have baseline data. I said I put in there that I would give baseline data when we had it. We got it. Um, so our students took the the entry test into the Math 180 uh, program, and it's uh, it, it kind of separates kids out into whether or not they are at a pre-multiplication stage, uh, course one, which is um, more of a pre-algebra uh, phase, and then or course two, which is kind of a later algebra. Um, component to it. Um, and so the students that we identified as needing to take the test, there were 37 kids that we um, we put into this program. So far, there are probably going to be some more that, that end up taking this screening test, but 65% of them uh, were at the pre-multiplication, which we were just talking about. We need to have more data as to what that means in this program. I don't know that it means they can't do multiplication, right? That's just the term that this that they use, gives, yeah, right? Yeah. But but it's the lower level, right? I think that's the important part. Is this sixty five percent of our kids were at the lower level of this? Thirty percent of them were at course one, and only five percent were at course two. You're this talking about those thirty seven kids. Those thirty seven. Of, 37 kids. of those thirty seven yeah. kids. Was yeah. this a particular grade level? Was this across? The so this is primarily um, primarily seventh and eighth grade. Although there are a few ninth graders yeah, ninth that we're grade. using this with as well. We're basically looking at middle school. And, and I would also say that it's being used in special ed and regular ed students uh, as well. 
And are they doing it in that, in, I don't remember what. So we have a course time. So, yeah. so this is a good thing. So There's a the math DMT strategy. Is, right, the DMT Thank report you. was, they still have their regular math class, and then this is an, an addition strategy. to yeah. that. That's called math strategies or math skills. There's two different courses that are used for this program. And I'm curious as to how many of those kids are also getting reading strategies course. I can find that for you. We, you know, don't spend a lot of time doing it, but it's always interesting to see kind of the overlap. Mm -hmm. Kids that just struggle. And finance, I don't think we have, there's a um, report in here about well, the fund balance somewhere. Oh, it was in, it's in this full packet. It's, it's in this, yeah, it's in this, I saw it in here. Um, and there's not a lot because it's just September, but it did highlight the um, fund balance. That's pretty healthy right and now. Was that line up at, towards the top of the 1.166 million? Is that set aside for the track? No, we have not set aside. The board will have to approve to move money to the capital fund. Okay. So there's no. The capital fund or the? Um, no, it was on the. Um, it says board approved budget projected fund balance. It's up towards the top of ours. 132, that's capital fund approved adjustment. Yeah, right here. It's right here. I think that comes from down here. Doesn't it? Sorry, I didn't mean to ask a question. Here, do you want to look? It's right here. No. We got it. It's on page, I don't even see anymore tonight, 90. <laughs> That's ridiculous. All right, so you are... After audit beginning balance. Yep. That's what you're looking at. So that's right that's our oh, that is our overall fund balance right now. Right now, okay. Yeah. With and and then there's already adjustments. So so that's where yeah. we started the year, and then there's some adjustments here as to what you would see down at the bottom where the unrestricted fund balance is the one point one point oh nine seven, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the actual amount that you would have available. Great. Whereas that's where we started the year. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we need to appoint Bill Kimball to be our board rep proxy for the um, Beehive and Visbit annual meetings, unless someone knows for sure they're going to be there. Are you raising I'm your hand? going to make the motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking Go too much time here. I will <laughs> we appoint Bill Kimball so as a representative. Unless, I, and I haven't thought of the fact that somebody else might raise their hand and say they want to do it. You, I thought that was you, Carl. <laughs> no, no. I learned tonight that I'm going to be on the noodles. The following person. Yeah. Okay. Duddy. So, <laughs> I heard the motion. Is there a second? Sure. Jonathan? Same. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I will do this in a second. Um, approve the lease of a van. I don't have the numbers. The numbers on the van? The alternative program? Yeah. yeah. Oh. We just did that yesterday at Central Office. Um, Nobody said that. Too much going on, huh? Yeah, they made that decision to the recommendation. I know that it was a Chrysler Pacifica. Is <laughs> 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 it teal? <laughs> From mid-state, but I have no paperwork. Can we wait Should until next month, or is that going to be a problem? Is it something that... Mm -hmm. Should I go find Bill Kimball? I can go find Bill. Go ask. Yeah. They've got a couple of quick Temporary hold. Well, okay, so the next one is to approve the joining the legal action to... Oppose the state board ruling and forced into a merger. May I speak to that, Adrian? Start to <laughs> um, I, I, I don't think we can really vote on that tonight um, because Kari and Karen aren't here. And it would, I think, be just a, even if we were to vote for it, which of course is my desire, it just wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't have the meaning 
I need to convince Kari. I have <laughs> Kari. I mean, Kari sent that statement. I emailed Karen this morning or last night, late last night, because mm -hmm. I didn't think George was coming either. And right. so I emailed right. the three of them and said, I am not comfortable voting on this with only four people. Mm -hmm. And give me your feedback. Not to mention, I think we would have had a tie. <laughs> yeah. So, I, that, yeah no. so Kari sent me that statement. I didn't hear from Karen, and then George ended up coming. But I agree with you. I think this is a really, really important issue and that we need the full board yeah. in order to vote on it. And they wanted our decision by September 28th. They're not going to get it. Uh, and I don't think it makes any difference in that group that's organizing that lawsuit. Uh, they're, <clears throat> they're, moving, they're moving forward, I gather. Um, I, it's, you know, I think lawsuit tends to um, freak people out. But it's, I can't even talk anymore. <laughs> so I, Scott, how about if we just save this whole discussion until that. October? Because yeah. it's 9.30 at night. Yeah. We're not going to vote. No we'll rehash it again in October. Okay. So Sounds if we just good. table it till October? I'm up for that. Are you guys okay with that? Yes. George, you're looking. Yeah, no, I'm fine with that. Okay, that's okay. A good idea. Okay, so we're going to table that. And then the next, they were... A tabling rescinding these policies because they didn't get passed at the full board meeting. <coughs> five point, oh, that should actually be 5.4, so it's 5.3. We're going to table this. So we are down to approve the board orders. Is there a motion to approve the board orders? So moved. Carl, a second. I'll second that. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That was a very I'm quiet. I'm I'm a a I'm just going so quick. I'm we so need tired. a few more. That was a, ask the yeah. first question. Do yeah. <laughs> you approve um, uh, future right. agenda items? <laughs> I'm just going to let that one go right now. Board communications. Since Car is not here, I'll do front porch for him. I was really delayed on that last yeah. month. I'm sorry. It was the beginning of school, and it just all got away from me. But I will do that. Um, so. We will see you in October. We will talk about that. We'll have the flood policy. We'll have the diversity statement. Um, and hopefully it won't be 9.30 when we're done. Thank you very much. We do need to talk about that. Oh, the van. van. I'm sorry. The van. The van. Um, we have bids from 802 Toyota and whatever the Chrysler dealership is. Down she knew that one. It's yeah. 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 State one. Um, it's a 36-month lease. Um, I don't remember exactly the numbers it just came in yesterday um, <clears throat> there was like a $40 difference between the two we had Chrysler Pacific so we had a couple out in the parking lot it's a 36 month lease and it has to be done for the U32 because the supervisor union can't hold the lease, can't hold the lease and it's for special education is it in the budget it's in the special. It's in the special. So special ed is paying for it. Paying for it from Washington Central through U32, just like you do for our building. Yeah. So we're just voting to let you use this as a pastor. Pretty much. Well, not a pastor. It's that you're the ones that can hold the lease. Right. We'll hold the lease, but you, but the, but the supervisory union the supervisory will be paying union. for it. So what do you want the motion to be? <laughs> to award the lease of a 36 month lease for a van. Are you getting this, Lisa? To Miss Day Chrysler. So moved. Second? Second. Scott? And we don't have an amount? Um, I don't have it off the top of my head. Can you so put it in the minutes tomorrow? We can do that. Would you guys be okay with that? Do you want yeah. the 36 month yep. amount or do you want the monthly charges? I'll put either or both. 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 Yeah. Be great. <laughs> yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Thanks. Sorry. Anything else? It is time to go. <laughs> we are adjourned. 9.30. Okay.